Hello there and welcome to Bathcasts, a podcast created by the young curators of Mosley Road Baths and funded by the National Lottery Heritage Fund. I'm Rachel Baker, your host and lover of baths. Bathcasts is a unique podcast where I'm interviewing people whilst they're in a slipper bath. Each guest is linked to Mosley Road Baths in a different way. So grab a rubber ducky and a bar of soap and you too can relax and listen whilst you're in the bath. This isn't just a podcast, it also contains a poem, a song and a guided meditation. You might as well call this a sandwich, because boy oh boy is it jam-packed. Anyway, here is your guided meditation. Hi, I'm Ajay Sun, and in today's guided meditation, you can close your eyes gently, or if it feels more accessible to you, you can keep the eyes open and lower the gaze. So in this guided meditation, we'll give you some invitations that you can repeat after me, or if you'd prefer, you can just enjoy the rising and the falling of the breath. Breathing in, I see myself as the rain. Breathing out, I see myself as the flower. In, rain. Out, flower. You can continue to practice in this way Or you can continue to notice the rising and the falling of the breath. Witnessing where maybe there is some tension in the body. Witnessing maybe what arises Breathing in, I see myself as the rain. Breathing out, I see myself as a flower. What a relaxing meditation that was. But now on to our final interview, which took place in Glasgow. This was with Paula, and it's a thorough and incredible discussion about Govanhill Baths. Paula has had a lifelong link with Govanhill, and her profound knowledge and personal insight is a pleasure to listen to. Whilst its uses have changed over the years, Paula lovingly explains how the baths remains an essential part to many of the community to this day. I hope you enjoy this interview. Hello there, and welcome to the final episode of Bathcast. This is the most, may well, is it the most exciting episode? I think it may well be, because we're in Glasgow today, and we're at the Arlington Baths. So outside of the Mosley Road Baths, and we're in a completely different setting, it's wonderful. In front of me, there are three baths, and in the middle one, we have our final guest, who is the wonderful Paula. Hi, Paula. Hello. Hello there. And uh, for those listening, what Bathcast is, is I am interviewing someone who is in the bath about their community outreach work. Mainly it's mainly to road baths, but today it is Govan Hill Baths. But how are you doing, uh, Paula? How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. I'm in this beautiful, big, hot bubble bath for the interview. So if anybody's listening out there in their bath, hello. Oh, and yeah, that's the hope that people are listening whilst they're in the bath. And I'm not going to lie, Paula, I don't think anyone is in a bath as good as you right now. This is it's the deepest bath I've ever seen. And also, you are the only guest who's had bubble bath. Everyone else, no bubble baths at all. Some people have just sat in the baths, had a few ducks maybe, but you've gone full out and I really appreciate it. What bubble bath is it? It is just a shower, a 
what do you call it? Oh, Rados. Yeah, it's just oh. a shower scrub oh. thing, but I just thought I'd use it as bubble bath. So it's not even bubble bath? No. You, that is so, I mean, people are listening and learning because you could <laughs> use shower gel as bubble bath. I didn't know you could do that. Without a doubt. Oh, it's really brilliant. So, do you, do you want to tell the listeners why we're at Arlington Baths today and not Govan Hill Baths? Yeah, so Govan Hill Baths has been closed since 2019 so that we can do our phase 1B refurbishment. So the baths were in a state, it was basically a derelict building. Currently the baths are still closed, although the exterior of the building is completely now refurbished, but we're waiting to do the inside. So we thought, where are we going to have this interview? So we are friends with the Arlington Baths. They and ourselves, and I'm sure mostly road baths as well, are all members of the Historic Pools of Britain. So I just got in touch and said, can we come and do this interview here because our baths are closed? And they said, of course you can. Oh, and it's, isn't it beautiful? And you can hear people in the background um, of the podcast who are showering and it's still in use. There's people swimming here today. And also I saw it's, it seems like a very a community-based place and that people come not just to swim, but at the back of the swimming baths is a group of men who are just having a nice chat. And, and I, as I was walking in and out of there, I thought, how nice is that? There's a sauna and a steam room here. Is there a sauna and steam room at Govan Hill? Yes, oh, there brilliant. will be. And a Turkish. They've got a Turkish suite here. Mm. We will have a Turkish as well. What is, what is a Turkish suite? What is a Turkish bath? It, it's like a dry heat. So you just lie right. on a bench. Mm. You're not in water. Mm. It's a dry heat that you get you very okay. hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then sometimes people go and have a cold bath after that and then go back in. Oh, brilliant. And before we begin with the serious questions, I've got to ask you, Paula, are you a bath taker in your day-to-day life? I have a bath every morning. Every morning, really? Every single morning. Oh, that's the most frequent <laughs> of all of our guests. Yeah, and, and then normally I have a bath and then I stand up and finish with shiver. Right. Uh, but yeah. I have a bath every day. Do you have a full bath? I have a really small bath. Right. It's a small bathroom I've got in my flat in Partick. But it's good. Mm. It's brilliant. It works. Oh, that's lovely. I'm glad that you're in your natural element for this interview today. So I want to begin with how you came to Govan Hill and what your initial links were with Govan Hill. Well, so my dad was born in Albert Road. My grandma Larkin lived in 29 Albert Road and then 23 Albert Road for over 70 years. So that's where my dad's family lived. He grew up going to Govan Hill Baths, as did my Aunt Josie, my Aunt Joyce, my Aunt Elner. Uh, my grandma Larkin used the steamy, which is what people would call the wash house. Wow. In Scotland, we call them steamies. So that's how I first knew Govan Hill Baths. And then I went to school in Govan Hill, to Holyrood Secondary School. And then I lived myself as an adult in Govan Hill. Uh, I went to uni in Northern Ireland. And after that, I came back to Glasgow, 1988. So I lived in Govan Hill from 1988 to 2001. So I didn't, to be honest, use the baths that very often. No. Uh, but I did use the slipper baths, which I'm sitting in at the moment, because the flat we had in Gertrude Street, it didn't have a very good immerser, so the water took ages to heat up, and then you didn't get very much, so it was much easier to go to Govan Hill Baths. And on the first floor, they had about, I don't know, 40 slipper baths. So you just paid... Four zero? Fi- yeah. Wow, that's a you lot. You just paid 50 pence, and you went into your cubicle, and you had your own bath. Oh, that's so lovely. I used that a lot. I swam a couple of times and I used the steamy. The steamy had now become a laundrette, so I used the laundrette quite a lot as well. Steamies are another word for the wash house. Oh, so wash the house. wash house traditionally were hugely important to working class communities. One of the main reasons that municipal baths and wash houses were opened up throughout the UK was so that women families could wash their clothes. So you would go, you'd have what was called your stall, and that would be a sink, uh, and you would have like one of these hand boards to wash your clothes on, and then they would go in a mangle, so you would get all the water out, and sometimes it would go in this spinner, 
and then you would put it in these big drying horses. So these were like big giant places where you pulled them out. They were on little tram lines. You pulled them out, hung all your clothes on them and pushed them back in and they would be dried with warm air. I see, and that, so at Mosley Road Bath there are also those in, on the upper level. They're still, well, mostly intact today. When you're in slipper baths, out of interest, can you chat to the people that you are with or is, are you in a private... You're in, in, in a the private area, computer right? cubicle, but there's no... It only goes up to, like, the height of a door or I just see. beyond that. So you could possibly chat to the next person in the next cubicle. But what's kind of interesting for us on that, about the slipper baths, is Governor Bath still had all the cubicles. And it still had all the cubicle doors, these amazing, gorgeous, hardwood doors from the 1900s, early 1900s. So it's part of our 2D digitisation that we're doing and we're working with students from the Museum Studies Department at Glasgow Uni. We documented all these slipper bath doors. Uh, so we cleaned them all and we set them all up. And they're amazing because there's loads of graffiti on them. You know, lots of naked women carved really? into wow. the wood. Lots of yeah. fuck the Pope, fuck right, the Queen, right. UD8, you know, <laughs> Glasgow, <laughs> up the IRA, you know. <laughs> lots of local topical issues so and and one of our students kind of did a little blog about that like yeah. how do you deal with you know especially racist stuff or sectarian material that's present there in your archive how do you deal with that yeah because, that's a really like you want to keep those stories because it says something you know uh, about the history of the past but you know obviously we don't tolerate anything like that at the past, you know, we're all about equality for all. So it's just interesting how you kind of manage to deal with certain things like that in your archive. Oh, absolutely. That's such a, an interesting point because it brings up many different discussions. And also when you said about the carving, out of interest, when people literally carve into the wood or what yeah, are you talking like with pens or pencils? Oh, oh wow. I would say with a key mm. or a sharp object, definitely with a sharp object. Right, that's so You know, that's pens so as well, you know, drawn on, but definitely lots of, like, a guitar, AK, what are they, AK-47s? Right, wow. The rifles, machine guns, um, all sorts of right. stuff. That's uh, fascinating, the amount of stuff on there. But that brings me to my next question about how do you think that the uses of the building has shifted to the present day, well, up until 2019? what have been the largest differences in the uses of the building? Right, so at the beginning, the baths and the wash houses were all built to deal with things like cholera, you know, outbreaks of these terrible diseases that killed everyone. You know, in the 1800s, prior to cholera, the middle classes or those in power thought that poor people got horrible diseases and died because they were ungodly because they were just guilty and ungodly and that's why they had such terrible lives. But of course, that wasn't the case. It was to do with their working conditions and their, uh, their housing conditions. And there was a big survey done in the 1830s and they're like, yeah, we've got to sort out how working class people are living. And then there was an act of parliament in 1934, or 1834, sorry, which was the Baths and Wash Houses Act, and that allowed councils to borrow money to build baths and wash houses. So when they were first opened, it was really to do with health uh, and well-being, cleanliness, and fighting off diseases. Mm. Also in Glasgow, Glasgow was now considered the second city of the empire, had lots of money, a lot of it had come from the slave trade, you know, the British Empire, but it, it was considered the second city of the empire, and they certainly didn't want working class men washing themselves in the River Clyde. This didn't suit the image of this uh, cosmopolitan, wonderful city right. in the early 1900s, so that's another reason they wanted to get people out of the rivers. Anything that happened in the municipal baths and wash houses previously happened in the rivers. So they wanted to get people out of the rivers and into municipal baths and wash houses. And like all the advertising, they did lots of advertising, like on the trams, saying it's your right as a citizen of Glasgow to come and take your bath, to come and go swimming. 
And of course, the access, you know, all these baths and wash houses throughout the UK were financially and geographically accessible to everyone. So it had a huge impact on the development of competitive amateur swimming in the UK. So there's all these Olympic swimmers came from Motherwell, Govan Hill Bass as well, you know. So there was lots of health, hygiene, you know, making life better for working class women, all these things. And that continued, you know, the, the, the wash house changed into a laundrette. People were still going there to wash their clothes. Of course, now everybody has a washing machine. Yes. But, you know, why not have a communal space? Why do we all need a washing machine? Why do we all need to buy a wash, new washing machine every four or five years? Yeah, that's so true. You know, yeah. why don't we have communal washing of our clothes? And also um, what comes with that is it allows people to meet others and have a social activity in terms of, like, you know, washing clothes together and... Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. I mean, in the steam, they used to have the steamy ball. So once a year, the, all the women would have a big ballroom dance. <laughs> Wow. Uh, no men allowed, you know. Mm. So, and in the, the saunas, especially in Govan Hill, you know, which has always been a place of immigration. So it was Irish, Italian, Jewish and Highlander when it opened. Then through the 1950s, you got South Asian community. So you would, you know, just before the bath closed, gay men, Muslim men, Jewish men would all be socialising in the Turkish or the sauna. So it's much more than just a, a place to feel healthy or Welcome deal with you. your hygiene. Wow, something's just fallen in my lap. It's a book, because we are going to take a short pause to listen to a story by Maya. Day 139. Inside. Today, I think I'll lay my body down and ask... Who are you to evict me from the strain? You see, I've been practicing worlding, remembering to self-determine my own dry ponds, or the palatial offerings of empty vending machines and mildewed sun lounges. The dripping rhythm chants to me from the back of my mind, from the windows beyond. Do you know who is running this city now? Because there's some, they say, who were baptized by this water. And there's some who say that it was life-giving, the baths, just a splash. Once a head throbbing with steam, you were suspended by bright days, filtered through soft-folding language. Remember the years when our mothers brought doctor's note poolside and your soothing hands tended the masses. Auntie, our open heart was flushed into pieces as we moved from large pools to small pools to droplets. Outside. Tomorrow, I can be a villain of the peace if you need me to. I can hand out petitions all day long. I can work as well as the water does for you to ask yourself, who are you in service to? Be here, be slippy with me, so that we may continue to swim. To work with my hands is a miraculous thing. It is my pen which scratches resistance into the walls, into the papers with small holding passages. To shout into the streets is a blessed thing. Cry out with me, come out, come out. This is for your mother, this is for your sister, this is for your home, for the world outside your chores, come out. Your watching eyes meet mine to say, I know who is running this city now. And here I need you to know that I am no stronger than my neighbor. She is no lighter than me. But even if the water runs dry, together we can swim. Inside. There are indentations, sacrificial ghosts in the walls, fingerprinted scars running through the grout, echoing the languages our building once spoke to us. We are expected to be sealed away in our closure, but how can we sit quiet when the light beams through the gaps of broken tiles to shine upon our faces? We sit in the empty gaps, eating home-cooked meals and wait 30 minutes before wandering through the pool. To be poolside means you're kept fed. 
By reaching hands, they grasp you through the barricade. Wait in the cracks for the tendrils of sun. Let them warm you. Our life here will be felt again soon. I know it. Soon. Now back to the interview. Honestly, you're answering so many of my historical questions, but I want to ask you some... They're quite silly, but I feel like people will appreciate it. Has there anything been ever found in the baths that, uh, that are of interest? Yeah, I mean, when the baths are open, like, there's all... We've got a memory book and there's stories of somebody losing their glass eye. Oh, that's unfortunate, that. Right, and yeah. then it being found in the bottom of the bath. Another person lost their um, engagement ring. There's oh. even, like, romances. Oh, really? So we got um, a guy to come from... He teach was teaching at Kingston Swimming Club. Paul, his second name's going out of my head for the moment. He works with Scottish Swimming. And he first met his wife at Governor Bass. She was working on reception and they had their first kiss in the bath. In the baths? Yeah. Well, in the water? No, I think okay, they were standing right. outside the water, right, but right. it's just amazing to have mm. kind of stories like that. And then, of course, all the stories about the occupation are incredibly yes, amazing because that yeah. really brought the community together. Well, that is where I'm heading next. When we um, went to the Deep End earlier, which is where the offices are based, and it's also a wonderful place of so many different creative practices, from pottery to textiles. There's a radio that runs out of there, isn't there? It's, oh, it was amazing. It's very similar to the old print works, which is opposite the Mosley Road Baths, um, and that's another link between the two. But when we were in your offices earlier, there was a lot of material on the walls that I saw said, occupy, occupy, occupy. And I was wondering if you could please tell us about the occupation, because it's such a fascinating community-driven story. Yes, yeah, so the council announced in January 2001 that they were going to close down Govan Hill Bass, and the community just went into pure shock. A lot of amateur swimming clubs ran out of it. Govan Hill Amateur Swimming Club, the Kingston Swimming Club, were two massive swimming clubs that ran out of it. So it was through letters sent to those swimming clubs that the community found out that they were going to close down the bus. And as soon as that happened, you know, everybody just said, no, we don't want that to happen. And they, it was a, a group called South Side Against Closures because there was other closures. They had closed the breast screening unit. They thought they were going to close other units. And, you know, there was a real kind of... People really thought that they didn't want to spend money in this community. If it had been some other community, they might not have been closing down those baths. So uh, the Saberpool group formed, they organised marches, they organised a consultation with the local community. And the reason that they were able to do that was because it had a really broad demographic, the group. So, you know, you would have young Asian children who used the baths all the time. You'd have old Irish women. You know, you'd have academics or professionals. So people who had the skills to kind of do consultations. You had the unemployed, you had students, you had activists. So you had this real big, broad range of people who all came together and said, no, we're not letting you close down these baths. And that was in 2001, which happened to be the 40th anniversary of the Upper Clyde Churchyard work set in. So in some sense, well, also, sorry, what's that? The it was the Upper Clyde shipyards. They were trying to right. amalgamate all these shipyards. Uh, the workers said no, so they did this workers sitting. So they stayed in the shipbuilding premises, continued to work yeah. rather than go on strike and go outside uh, I see. Uh, and not get back in. You know, they would have just closed the place down. So someone said, I think if we're going to have any chance of saving this pool, we have to occupy it. So on the, the 21st of March, towards the end of the day, a group of people went in and just said to the staff, we're occupying the building. They had to handcuff themselves to the railings inside and the people just went home. <laughs> they were in the building. 
So, of course, the council tried to get them out, but they didn't really know what to do. Immediately, there was a 24 hour seven picket outside, and it was a really kind of inventive, creative campaign. So, they occupied other buildings run by the city, you know, the Kelvin Hall, Bella Houston Pass, because the Glasgow City Council was saying, oh, you can just go to Bella Houston Pass or the Gorbals. And people were saying, no. But the Gorbals especially, it was a big glass building. There was no way that South Asian women were going to go there. I've seen. You know, the ladies' nights at Governor Hill Bass were like one of the only safe places in Glasgow for South Asian women to meet and socialise, apart from the textile shops. So it was really so important to that group in particular. Other groups, people who had physical and mental health problems, people who have barriers to access anyway, were now getting shut out of their, their local pool. So everybody came together on that campaign, local businesses, donated food, donated money. They were getting 80 quid a day in donations. It was really successful. It was a great atmosphere on the picket line. We've got a film called United We Will Swim again. Uh, you can get it on the Governor Hill Bass website. And Kazim Khan just talks about how, you know, that picket line was just like your family. You know, you felt really wanted and loved. So it's a really important time, you know. So that, that's 2001. In Govan Hill, there would have been a lot of unemployment. Various factors fed into that being, I would say, such a successful occupation, even though it was brutally evicted by Strathclyde Police on the 7th of August of that year with helicopters and police wow. on horses. It was on national news. There was a 1,000 people on the street. They were all kettled. So it was a really, really terrible end. The campaign was a really kind of peaceful, joyful, creative. They made a little international peace garden next to the bass. They had a gala day on the 100th anniversary of the, the sit-in with like, young South Asian girls dancing, music, circus performers, you know, taking over the whole street. It empowered people. You know, it's their building, and we've got to remember that these vats are ours. The council are employed to look after our stuff. You know, it's our taxpayers' money that pays for this. These are our baths, and they're not being looked after properly. I mean, once the, it was evicted, uh, the campaign went on, the picket continued into the next year for another year, and then eventually in 2004, that the city council were going to sell the baths off. But because it was a listed building, they had to offer it to someone who would open it for its original purpose. So the Govan Hill Baths Community Trust was formed and it's taken from then until now. Today is over £10 million to wow. try and get it open. We now need another £6 million because yeah. all the prices have gone up. And of course, the Save Our Pool campaign was all about the city reopening it and running it. The campaign was pushed into a corner because they were about to sell it. That's why the trust was it created. Ideally, we would have wanted the city council to still yes. be running that. Uh, but we were forced into a situation where we had to take it on ourselves. I see. To hear how much of the community, you know, made a huge impact in it still being around today and still being able to benefit so many people today. And I'm so excited for when it reopens again. So it's honestly been so lovely doing this project to see, you know, from Birmingham to Glasgow, the similarities and the benefits of both baths and not only, you know, the, the services in terms of washing and swimming, but the sports activities, the arts activities, the, the socialising that goes on there that has lifelong effects. There's so many links and how those projects create positives in both cities. But it's been so nice chatting to you. How's, how's the bath been? Have you enjoyed it? It's great, it's lovely. And I'm just going to use a wee bit of oh, the yes. carbolic soap. Some people might remember this. It's very smelly, pink or green, made from carbolic acid. Uh, so I'm just going to wash myself with some mm. of that. Maybe you might have your Lush soap or your, uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to name brands, but you know, your Imperial <laughs> Leather, but here we've got Carbolic. So, so also, Carbolic soap, why, why is that, is that, is it good for 
cleanliness? Is it good? Is that why? Yes, why it doesn't the it. Oh, I see, right. Uh, yeah, well, it's been absolutely wonderful speaking to you, Paula. I've loved it. Sorry I went off a bit of tangent there about carbolic soap, but it was... No, 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 that's yeah. great. One mm. thing I was just going oh, to Oh, go on, add yes, go on, add, add. Was, I mean, one of those other similarities, we really wanted to do this interview with Zam Zaid, who's a South Asian woman uh, in Glasgow, but unfortunately she wasn't able to make it today. So I, I really want to emphasise that Recently in our archive, we, we kind of said, OK, we know the South Asian woman experience, but we don't have tangible evidence of that within the archive because it was so important to the bats. So we have Samar Jamal, who's doing a sound piece for this, and Maya Uppal, who's writing a short story. So we're really happy about that because it's a huge South Asian community around Governor Wass and also uh, yes, absolutely. Oh, you, you've wrapped up perfectly there. And thank you so much for your time and your wonderful knowledge and your kindness. That was such a lovely chat. Paula is a walking, talking, bathing Wikipedia. Now to finish off with some music from Samar Jamal. Govan Halbas Community Trust. Amare Tarvazi Kulete, Uniso Satrame. Gene, ye subsibatinte, Sultanatme. Ye jagati, Terneki, Toneki, Kushiamananeki, or Ek Tusroko, Joneki. Uttavasta Tapkeki or Toki. Ye jagati or Tokeli. कपड़े धोने और सुखाने की हम सही से बात करने और आपके दुख सुख के करने की जगह एक दोस्ती की और तलुकात बनने की जगह उधर लोग जाते थे स्टीमी बॉल में गुस्सल खाना बंद हो गया 1990 में इधर 40,000 औरतें तहने के लिए आती थी उन्होंने कब्जा कर लिया 2001 में इमारी की हिफाजत के लिए औरत कहती थी मैं तो किसी तौर गोरपल की स्विमिंग पूल में नहीं जाऊंगी लोगों ने 140 दिन के लिए कब्जा रखा To finish this episode, we'll be heading back to Ajay's son for a guided meditation. For this guided meditation, I will invite you to close the eyes if this feels comfortable or if it feels more accessible, you can keep the eyes open and lower the gaze. In this moment, I would like you to think of someone or some cause that you would like to dedicate this practice to. Breathing in, I see myself as a river. Breathing out, I feel connection. In, river. Out, connection. You can continue in this way, or you can simply notice the rising and the falling of the breath in the body. Sending out this practice like a river. Sending out compassion, sending out love. Breathing in, I see myself as a river. 
breathing out, I feel connection. Thank you for listening to the final episode of Bathcast. If you haven't listened to the rest, then you can do so now. If you have, well, then you get an invisible bath badge. I've been Rachel Baker, and I've loved chatting to every single one of our brilliant guests, and I hope you've enjoyed it too. A final bubbly bath. Bye-bye. <laughs>